Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 10th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Who better to explain to you the intricacies of the zip file format than Didier, who has written tools to actually parse the format. One interesting artifact that Didier is looking at today is that the minute in the timestamp sometimes exceeds 59 minutes. In the example that Didier here has, it's 63. Well, a uh, pretty straightforward and simple explanation here. It's actually kind of a good old-fashioned format here, a DOS time, DOS date. What I sort of like about it a little bit uh, with that sort of history in mind is how efficient it is in that it doesn't just encode the uh, minutes as, let's say, a string or such, but uh, actually as five uh, bits. So two bytes are being split up to encode seconds, minutes, and hours. And that results in this little bit uh, interesting parsing issue where you have five bits that are representing the minutes which can be used to encode the number 63 so it's certainly possible to create an invalid timestamp here and what that results in is if you are using some uh, GUI tools in order then uh, to look at a zip file that the modified time is just left uh, empty. So this could be used by an attacker to just sort of obscure the modified time. It's not even displayed. Not sure if that actually makes it more obvious that something is wrong with this particular file. And then we have an update from Akamai regarding MageCard. Remember, MageCard sort of put itself on the map by uh, compromising some companies that delivered JavaScript being included on many large web pages. Since then, they sort of have refined their game and uh, Akamai sort of has the latest iteration of this. Real good read if you are sort of interested in obfuscated JavaScript. So first of all, the attacker has to compromise the website here in these latest attacks. And then they're using a variety of different methods to inject malicious JavaScript. For example, they're using the on-air attribute in image tags in order to help a little bit with the obfuscation. Uh, Check see how much that actually obfuscates it, uh, given that uh, they have then this fairly ugly junk of uh, JavaScript as part of uh, the image tag. It will actually then also display an image, which is sort of a little uh, trick they're playing here they're also then uh, loading the malicious code but then next replacing that with a load of a page that doesn't exist so triggering a 404 error if you are looking at the dom of the web page after the attack happened all you will see is this 404 error which of course now may also make analysis slower and a bit more confusing so if you're running into a incident like that, uh, take a look at Akamai's blog. It will certainly simplify your analysis. I think it was last week that I talked about the vulnerabilities in XM that were first made public and then we had patches at least for some of them. Well, the real challenge now is to figure out what's running XM and we have Sophos coming forward stating that it's Sophos firewall and UTM are affected by this. That's certainly sort of one of those spots where you wouldn't necessarily expect this code to run. So uh, please update your Sophos devices. And if you're running a WatchGuard firewall, you may want to read a blog by Eddie Sang with some of the weaknesses in the WatchGuard clientless single sign-on. The problem here is that in order to validate a user, the firewall will connect to that user's workstation, trying to authenticate to port 445 in order to then authenticate the user. The problem with this is that, well, the firewall, of course, needs to send its credentials along with that request. This could be used then for all the sort of standard attacks against uh, the uh, Windows uh, networking authentication, like your relay attacks and uh, cracking of password hashes. 
your only option really is to disable this feature which may come at a cost of usability to your users because now they may need to log in more often in order to actually uh, browse the internet. Well, uh, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.